In this tutorial, we are going to create a template for our Google Jamboard so that we can share it out with our students. For this tutorial, we are going to need an inspirational graphic organizer, Google Drawings, and a blank Google Jamboard. So let's open up our drive and get started. To access our Google Drawings, we're going to go into our Google Drive. This is going to open up all of our Google products and files. When I hit the plus sign next to new, my products open up, and then I can hit more and select Google Drawings. While I'm here, I'm also going to open up a blank Google Jamboard. I can access my Google Jamboard in the same way through my drive, or I can open it up through my waffle and hitting the Jamboard icon. You can also go to jamboard.google.com as a quick shortcut. I'm going to hit the orange circle, it says new jam, and now I have my untitled jam. I'm going to name this evaluating evidence. I'm also going to name my Google drawing the same thing. So if you're not familiar with Google Drawings, it really works in the same way as Google uh, Slides. We have our blank interface here and the tools are basically the same and in the same spot. So to begin, I'm going to set up my page and change the, the page setup so that it is instead of standard widescreen 16 to nine aspect ratio and I'm gonna hit apply. This will allow me to transfer my drawing to my Google Jamboard without much blurriness or anything like that. So we have our blank slide here, and we can see that it is transparent by the gray and white check marks. This way, when I download, download my image and apply it right onto my Jamboard, um, we don't transfer any of the other colors or anything like that. It's transparent. So to do our evaluating evidence graphic organizer, I'm just looking around for some inspiration. I see some different boxes with some different directions on them. Um, so I'm going to use that as sort of my inspiration here. I wanna give my graphic organizer a title. So I'm just going to go to insert shapes. I like this rounded rectangle. When I click on it, it's going to open up the crosshairs. So now I can just take my crosshairs and drag it by holding down my mouse and sliding with my cursor. And this brings up an automatically filled box. So I'm gonna change that fill color. I'm gonna choose a palette, um, maybe off of these blues. I like this light aquamarine. I'm also gonna change my border color and my border weight. Um, make it nice and heavy so that it pops. A lot of this is aesthetic, so you choose what works right for you. I'm going to choose this Oswald font. It's nice and bold and dark. And then I'm going to center it onto my page. And now I'm going to call it Evaluating Evidence. Okay. We can add directions. We can add as much or as little detail as you like, depending on the scope of your class and what their needs are. I'm going to make this pretty generic so that it's useful for multiple subjects and grade levels. Okay, so now I'm going to center my title on the page. I can do that by dragging it. What I like about Google Drawings is this red line that appears to show you that you're centered. Okay, I can also right click and choose center on page horizontally. Okay, so now let's add our graphic organizer squares. Since I'm using four evidences and four claims, I'm going to insert a table and I'm going to make a two by two square. Okay, so now I have my square here. I can size my table onto my page again by dragging the corners and sizing it so that it fits. Okay. When you use this Jamboard with your students, you can invite them to add sticky notes, images, other text boxes, and shapes so that they can participate on the Jamboard. So I'm just dragging this table so that it is the size of my page because we want to utilize as much room as possible. Okay. 
Now I'm going to add my borders. I'm going to make a nice black and I'm going to do a dotted border here just to make it a little more interesting and I'm going to make it a little heavier in three points. Okay, so now let's fill in some of these boxes. I'm going to click onto one of the boxes with my fill line. I'm going to choose a nice light orange. Then for my next box, I'm going to choose a light purple. And then my third box, I'm going to choose a green. And my fourth box, I'm going to choose this blue. Okay, so we have a very bright box to work with. If this does not work for you, you can choose another palette or you can choose just a white fill or nothing at all. So here I'm going to now add a few more boxes um, and I'm going to insert my claim and evidence boxes. So I'm just gonna take my text, my text box, and I'm gonna write claim number one. Okay. And then I'm just control C, control V, or command C, command V. And now I'm going to write evidence. You can write supporting evidence. You can write just evidence, whatever works for you. And again, I hope that this tutorial works as inspiration for you to create your own graphic organizers. So that they're all the same size, I'm just continuously copying and pasting them into my squares. You can also change the font, but really that is aesthetic. Okay, now let's move this box, let's move these two boxes over to this side as well. Because these are color coded, it is not that confusing. Um, but now I'm going to insert a shape into the middle of my board um, and I'm going to call it topic or main idea, whatever works for you. I'm just gonna choose this circle here and I'm gonna draw a circle over the front of my page. And so I can invite my students to either say support or refute since we're evaluating evidence. I can ask them to find the author's purpose. I can ask them to find the main idea. Um, really depends on the scope of your lesson. And so I'm gonna make this nice border a little heavier so that it pops and I'm going to write topic in the middle so that my students can see. Okay. I'm also going to change the font because I like to change the font. Okay. So now we have our basic evaluating evidence graphic organizer. Um, when we utilize this with our students, we can invite them to use sticky notes or text boxes to write their claims and their supporting evidence in the fields. Um, I can make this bigger or smaller depending on how I want it to fit my screen. But that's basically it. Um, I can center this box again by right clicking and choosing center on page horizontally. So that's step one. What we're going to do now is go to file and download. And we're going to download this as a PNG image. And Google Jamboard will allow you to upload any image file. Um, so this saves to my pictures and hit save and it's down here at the bottom of my screen. So I'm going to jump on over to my Jamboard and I'm going to hit the insert image icon. I can drag my image and it's going to upload onto the screen. Okay, so now that it's here, it's in the center of our screen, I'm going to stretch it and size it so that it meets the needs of my board. I told you, most of this tutorial is sizing images. But once you get the hang of it, it's pretty relaxing. So we are, I'm satisfied with my board and its position. Um, so one, we're going to go one step further. I'm going to show you a quick trick to keeping this image on your board. So one of the issues that we have when we use um, Jamboards collaboratively is that these, these images and these text boxes can move. Um, often accidentally. So what I'm going to do is hit the zoom and shrink my jam to 25%. So I'm going to go over here to the text box and I'm going to insert a very large clear text box over my jam board. I'm just going to make it huge. You can do this a couple of times. The more you do it, the more layers you have 
and the less likely you are to have your jam move. I'm just gonna do it once so that you get the idea. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to fit and you can see here, I'm gonna hit my cursor. I can see here that no matter what I do, I can't move the image on my Jamboard. So I hope this helps. Please let me know how you are utilizing Jamboard in your classes and feel free to share with me any templates that you create. Thank you so much for watching.